So based on the last video, sketching this should be a breeze, and we have a few ways of checking it. So, you know, again, in addition to graphing this, I want to point out something else you can notice. So what are my zeros? I got negative 5 as a 0. And again, I really should identify this as an f of x number line. And then 6. Right, and so now I'm going to plug in, let's plug in, you know, um, we don't even have to go in order. I'm going to plug in 0. It's in between negative 5 and 6. When I plug in 0, I get 0 plus 5 squared, which is a positive number. And then 0 minus 6 is a negative number, but when you raise that to the 4th, that's positive because it's a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative. So that's a positive. Now, I claim that I know that there should be a plus here. The reason I say I know that is because if you look at, for instance, if you look at uh, the 0, negative 5, its multiplicity, its multiplicity is a 2, which is even. So we know the graph is going to bounce. And at 6, the multiplicity is even 2. Right, it's a 4, so it's going to bounce. So that means that if the function is positive, it's going to bounce at the 0 and then continue on being positive. Okay, now again, if you don't feel comfortable with that reasoning, then by all means, plug in 7 and evaluate, and you should see that this would still be positive. But this is another line of reasoning you can use. Uh, negative 5, again, it's going to bounce. So if, you know, whatever it was doing here, it bounced and continued doing the same thing over here. So it must be a plus here, too. And of course, you could plug in negative 7 or something. You'll see that, that 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 happens. So our graph looks like this. So uh, the function's positive, and then positive, and then positive. So the function's always positive, except at those zeros. So it must come down, be zero, but then bounce. Now it's got to turn around at some point, zero, and then it bounces. All right, and so uh, so that's another way you can get get these sketches if you use that sort of reasoning, the sort of the, the multiplicity and the bouncing and crossing behavior. Um, one thing I want to point out is, or ask, what is the degree What is the degree of this polynomial? So how would I figure out what the degree is? Well, it's easiest to see what the degree is if we know, if we have the function in standard form. In standard form would be if we if it was all multiplied out and we could just look at the lead coefficient, the highest, you know, the highest, the term with the highest power, then we would know what the degree is. So we're not going to do that because that's a pain. We'd have to do x minus 6 to the fourth. I mean, that's a crazy multiplication. And x plus 5 squared isn't so bad, but it's, we don't want to do it. So what we can do is just, let's kind of foresee what would happen. If I do x plus 5 squared, then this part here is going to turn into a, it's going to be x squared plus some stuff, right? And then if I do this out, I get x to the fourth plus some stuff. And again, I don't really care what that stuff is. But notice, if you do this out, the first term would be x to the fourth. And so what would happen if I multiplied this by this? Well, at some point, when you do your, quote, FOIL, you would be multiplying x squared times x to the fourth, which equals x to the sixth. And then after that, you know, all of, there's a bunch of all of these combinations of multiplying that would happen with the other terms. But... Now it just contributes to some stuff. And so using that reasoning, we can figure out that the degree of the polynomial is 6. That's a degree 6 polynomial. 
Now you got to be very careful. A lot of a lot of people think, oh, you just add the two and the four. That's true technically here, but it wouldn't be true if I did this. Because if I if I made this x squared here, now when you multiply x squared minus six out to the fourth, this is this term does not be become a degree four. It actually becomes a degree eight because you're doing x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared. Okay, so don't don't try to use the reasoning I use down here, not tricks. Um, um, so so what's the point of knowing the degree? Well, there is something very there is something about the degree of a polynomial that relates to its n behavior. And so what I mean by n behavior is, of course, the limit as x goes to infinity and the limit as x goes to negative infinity. There is something about the degree of the polynomial that determines the end behavior. In this case, they both go to infinity. So I'm not going to answer that. I think I'm going to leave that to kind of you to, for you to discover. We can talk about it in class. But the fact that this is a degree 6, I know, I knew that this, the end behavior was going to be as it is before I even did this problem. And so I challenge you to figure out if you know what's, uh, what's going on there.